Hello, this is Michael Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Keystone Bullet Crossfire 2200 BH. I'm going to walk you around your travel trailer, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite, a few things taken into consideration when parking. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for your awning. On your off campsite, no slide to worry about, so you really just need to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to be just above your rear tire on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle and then your water is going to hook up just behind your storage area there so park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite once we arrive and unhook our hitch first thing we do is level our unit comes with a power tongue jack night docking light should you arrive at night retract to lower extend to raise now should you lose power you do have this hand crank goes underneath the rubber stopper that's on here get this on here and get this up and down without power speaking of power check your battery post every now and then make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time watch this rubber stopper here too it'll get your fingers real black just a heads up on those uh check your battery post every now and then make sure those haven't wiggled loose once we got our unit level next thing we're going to do is stabilize it your unit comes with power stabilizing jacks. Right inside here is, you're gonna hit extend. Extend's gonna run them down, sometimes one before the other. As I run them down, I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Run these down just until they're taut. Once it feels like it's gonna it's locked in and it's going to start lifting the unit stop remember our unit's already level we just want to stabilize it i want to squeeze in here that you do have a manual override on these jacks it is a slotted hand crank that when catches the groove we'll get these up and down without power Once we're inside or outside are your front ones. Here's your rear. Extend on those. You can hear them run down and you'll feel. That they're down. Once we got our unit level and stable. We can hook up our power and water. There's the rear ones down. Power. Big long 30 amp cord here. Plugs in the side. The way these Furion plugs go in now is they'll go in at about 11 o'clock. We turn that to noon. Put your gray washer on. That lock that in there for you. Now at the end of this 30 amp service, should you need to plug into a 110, in your convenience pack will be a uh, 30 to 15 amp reducer. So you can plug into a 110 somewhere. Got our power hooked up. Took up our water. At campsites, we're going to hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, our water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when putting water into your fluid, into your unit, because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. But don't turn your hose on yet. Let's go find your hot water heater. Yours is located on the campsite. Just in front of your outdoor kitchen here. And all we're doing at this point, folks, make sure drain plugs back in. Throw some plumber's uh, tape around there, not putty. Putty will get gummed up on you. Uh, get that on there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose has been on for a few minutes, I want you to go inside, open up uh, all of your water lines. Turn on your taps, get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Get all the air out of the lines. Once the water's running good, shut them off. Shower, bathroom, same way. And shut them off. And then you're all set up to camp. Now let's say we're going to go dry camping, or boondocking as we like to call it. In that case, we're going to fill up our fresh water or potable water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here, except you fill, uh, gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell that it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. 
Keep an eye on that until it's full. Don't leave this unattended while you're filling it. Uh, once that's full, remove your hose, put this cap back on, and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up with power and water, ready to camp. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of your unit. Big pass-through storage area here. Inverter prep right there. And there's your solar charge controller. The whole purpose of this is to have your solar panels or control how much power goes to your batteries from your solar panels. It keeps them from overcharging your batteries. Again, our hot and cold water. Do you have an outdoor shower over here? I'll show you where the hose is and uh handle it spray port for that is hot and cold that is access to the back of your fridge for the techs again your power glue for your furnace a few things on that one make sure it's never blocked two if you're running your furnace steer clear of that it says hot four times for a reason gets hot and lastly they do sell bug covers for those you don't want bugs getting in there and making any nests when you're not using it again power cord Black tank flush. We will talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Again, our rear stabilizing jacks. If you got a spare tire on the back, I highly recommend getting a cover for it. Going to keep it from dry rotting over the years. Keystone has its own backup camera that you can order for these. All prepped for it. You do have a walkable uh, roof, and there's a rear, rear wall ladder prep on this, so you can. Get a ladder on this wall. There's another spot for that hose. I'll show you where that hose is I've been speaking of. Right inside here, get a big long quick connect hose as well as the spray handle to use on it. Still got winterization in it. Also got a table here and a fridge here. Remember this compartment door is not a magnet you got to pull back on that to release it keep that locked for travel do you get a 110 out here again our hot water heater on your awning you have what's called a pitch control where you can pull it down on this arm and that will tilt your awning and let the rainwater run all one way you got a couple outdoor speakers led lighting strip on the awning the other passive storage here with lighting all uh, your propane does have a cover as a regulator just point it toward the tank you wish to be using lefty lucy to open your battery does have a disconnect that will disconnect all the battery power to the unit we'll talk about that again here in a few and then here's where you can plug in a solar panel to trickle charge your batteries well, it covers everything out here so take a look on the inside all right, coming up inside your unit, first thing I would like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Immediately to our left up top, it's going to be our control panel. So here's where you check the level of your battery, your fresh water. That's what I said to hold down when filling up your potable water. I'll tell you when that's full. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water heater. If hooked to gas, if hooked to electric, it does make a difference. Choose correctly. Here's where you turn on your water pump when utilizing that fresh water. Porch ceiling or porch light, which is that awning light and ceiling light. Awning control. A couple things on your awning. Number one, bringing it in or out. You see your door cannot be opened up all the way. Awning is right up tight to it. So make sure you're at least at about 90 degrees here and out of its way. You only want to run that out until you can see that white flap fall down and your brown bar showing. If you continue to run that out, it will run up, start to run itself up backwards, flip up onto itself and roll itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you're running out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. You don't have to run it out all the way. Just don't run it out past that flap. Again, as this comes in, I'm making sure that my door is out of its way. Also, make sure my lights are off. They are. These are just for um, other units that may need that. I see. 
slam locks work best when gently slammed. I uh, immediately turn to our kitchen and come down here to your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Reason I mention that's 12 volt, this is always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking, nothing plugged in charging your battery, just your solar power up top, um, use that battery disconnect to keep this running your battery down while you're gone. Your table will lift up, legs removed, put the uh, tabletop on here, put your back cushions on top, gives you a whole nother sleeping quarters. Remote for this radio up here. Everyone else, and they deserve to have AM, the FM, Bluetooth. Being paid. Shut that off. AM, FM, Bluetooth. Um, really nice sound system. USB, auxiliary ports. There is a mounting bracket for a TV here. Here's your furnace. Um, when you turn your furnace on, it will run for a while after you shut it back off. So I got to run it turned on now. Now I'm actually going to shut it off. And you'll notice that it'll take a few minutes for the fan to run through before it actually shuts off. Charging ports and individual lighting in our bunk area and storage underneath. Your bed will lift up to put that storage under there. Coming into our bathroom, want to make sure you do got a hand crank open, power exhaust vent here. Access panel to your plumbing, both of those. Speaking of plumbing, keep an eye on yours. It's almost all packs nowadays, but you're bouncing a house down the road, things could wiggle loose over time, so just keep an eye on things. Water is the enemy of your unit. Um, GFCI reset here on our 110 in the bathroom. Individual lighting here. Coming out in the hallway is our breaker box. A ton of 15s, a 10, and a couple of 40s. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go. See the uh, furnace fan is still running even though it's shut off. Dometic fridge, open up our door, controls will be up top. Turn it on. We're going to push this button in to be on auto. Auto means when we're plugged in, we're running off electricity. As soon as we unplug, we're on gas. Lift this up to make it just gas. If that light comes on, check your gas. Microwave. Self-explanatory. You got a fan and a light above that. Got a nice cooktop here. This will light with a stick lighter. You turn this up to the high. Light it with a stick lighter, safely. A lot of individual lighting here. You sink again, plumbing underneath here, so keep an eye on it. That's a couple more things. You've got your um, smoke alarm in the ceiling here and your AC unit, which when plugged into 110, will run. But you just do all your controls from here. All right, let me show you how to set up this bed. Murphy beds are pretty simple. Begin by flattening down the bottom. I'm just going to jack like this by lifting the front up and laying it down. Unhook here. Unhook here and just bring it forward. And you're going to lift out on this footboard because your footboard is going to lay out over top of your bed here and just that simple. you got your bed. And from another angle, putting it back up. Get in the middle, give you good leverage as it comes up. Foot forward's gonna fold in. Go back to a couple mattresses catching now. Just lock you, locks in here. Lift the front of this and then grab the back to pull it forward. Just like put you back to a sofa. Uh, one more thing here, you can also subscribe to a gateway 4G LTE and Wi-Fi. There's a scan there you can scan to activate that. Alright, looks like we're getting ready to leave the campsite and close the unit up. I shut off my ceiling lights and walk through and shut off all my accent lights now. Do that real quick. Go 
I'll leave any lighting on in here. I uh, did mention you got another vent here as well. No fan exhaust to it though. Now I say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit. Just make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to be banging around as we head down the road. And let's exit the unit. Now before you leave the dump station, and I say that because you're going to want to get inside and check the levels of your tanks on your control panel. Before you leave the dump station, lock and deadbolt this door, lift and turn that handle. That's how you want your door for travel. So you fold these up. Now, if we are out boondocking, we're going to bring up our stabilizing jacks. Come around here to our freshwater tank, which is going to be underneath our freshwater tank, and dump that drain. Hook up our hitch and head on to the closest dump station or home, whichever we're in need of. If we are at a campsite, we'll unhook our power, our water, our cable. Retract the stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, you're going to want to park accordingly. Your dump is going to be right behind your tires there, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle, and you got a 10-foot hose that comes in your convenience bag. Once you arrive and hook up your hose, you're going to want to pull your black tank. That's going to be the one on the right. That's going to be your sewage. Once it sounds like that's no longer draining, go inside, check the level of your black tank. If it shows very little or none, come back out here, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, hook it up here to this tank flush valve, and turn that on. Let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, good five minutes. Remove your hose, shut that. Now make sure all that washout water you just put in there has drained. Once that's all empty, close your black handle and pull your gray. Now when my gray tanks are draining, usually when I'll go ahead and dump my fresh water drains, or my uh, low point drains. Once my low point drains are done, if we're done camping for the season, you're going to want to head over to your hot water heater and drain it out. First thing you want to do, lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to release all the pressure that's in there. Careful, a lot of hot water is going to come out of there. When that's done, push that down, otherwise your door won't close. Then you can pull this drain for residual hot water. Once that's done, make sure you close your door back on that. Come over here, make sure your gray is done. Your gray is done. Close that gray, grab your hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your stinky slinky container. Again, thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoy this bullet crossfire for many years to come. Happy camping.